It all started in 1995 with the Rugby World Cup final. When the guys were singing Kosi Zikelele, Ye Africa. I made a decision and I made it a vision of my life. One day to be a Springbok rugby player. Standing in front of 70,000 people. Going onto the rugby field, being a warrior for South Africa. I was an officer in, um, from 1997 to 2001. I was privileged to play two years for the office first team um, in Standard 9 and Matric. And, um, but rugby, then rugby really started to be my God. And I knew that Natalie was actually, when we met each other um, just after school, I actually knew that she is my wife that I'm going to marry. And um, yeah, rugby was more, started getting more important than my relationships. And uh, I basically uh, said to Natalie, we have to break up because my rugby, I want to focus now on my rugby and my dreams. And it was all about me, myself and I. My vision was to go and play rugby in England and then after that uh, climb the ladder, you know, the Super 14 and, and, and playing for the Springboks. That was the whole vision. Then I went to a chiropractor just to put my alignment and everything in, in alignment again, you know, that I can be 100% uh, for, for our British tour. And um, basically what happened was um, the chiropractor tested my, my nerves and um, he hit me on my left leg and he said there was no, no reflection. And um, he hit me on my right and there was a reflection. He said he can't touch me, I must immediately go for an MR scan. Then the doctor came out and he looked at me and he says, are you sure that you um, can walk still? And I said, yes, what's, what's, what's the problem? And he said, no, you've got a disc prolapse in your L4, L5. Um, you actually should have been like paralyzed. I said, no, no, I'm still fine, um, 100%. But I said, I've got a severe pain in my left leg and he said, are you playing rugby? He said, I said, yes. And then he said, listen, you're never going to play rugby again. And then I started praying. I said, Lord, help me, help me, help me heal me, and all that stuff. But um, it was just like another, another time that I'm using him as a spare wheel. I started getting a rebellious spirit in my, in my life. Started smoking, started drinking, you know, when we went overseas. And then, uh, well, I, I, I traveled for, for another month uh, um, to France and Switzerland, to seeing the world. And I remember uh, we went to Netherlands, and after the Netherlands we went to London. I was standing on uh, London Heathrow flying back, and I realized that I'm losing control over my bladder. And I found my mum, and I said to her, listen, she must just check with the, with the doctor, what is it? And he said, um, that is one of, our, one of your nerves that runs through, and if, if that is like... Um, too long under, under pressure, it can have permanent damage, then you then I have to walk for the rest of my life in um, haggies or nappies. I went to see the neurologist and basically um, he said to me, oh, we have to uh, operate immediately. And I just realized that God is now my last resort. That I have to, that's the only, only thing that can help me now. And um, I just prayed to him. I remember I got the scripture, Philippians 3 verse 7 which uh, stated like I interpreted it on my own and God said like what is important for you is not important for me because I've got greater plans for you. I just took it and said Lord I choose and I thank you therefore and uh, I went in for my operation um, I, I had a discectomy, I had a laminectomy um, then everything was, I had severe pain still after my op and the doctor said it, everything went well and then it was actually at my lowest, lowest lowest point you know it was like the Koenigs of the lowest point in my life all my dreams are shattered um, I didn't even even have a support structure it was only my mum and my dad you know and in rugby you uh, when you play rugby everybody knows you everybody want to greet you and now when I'm lying in bed it's only your mum and your dad and your family that is supporting you and uh, then I realized this is life and I remember I SMS Natalie and I asked her to uh, if, if we can just maybe reunite because you know, like John 10, 10 says, the enemy will come to steal and destroy and destruct. But Jesus said he came to give us a life in abundance. And at that stage, the enemy had stolen from my life, from my vision, from my dreams, from my relationships. Um, I SMS Natalie and I said to her, listen, would you just come and um, we can just chat? And, when, and she immediately came to the hospital and 
it was again lo loved at first sight because you know like the word says what started in a blessing will end in a blessing because we made the decision when we we started dating that we'll um, build it on a peer relationship no, no no sexual sin no sexual immorality so she supported me for that uh, period when i was like in the deepest darkest root now that jesus came into my life I just realized that he came to give me a life in abundance and he gave us the authority to step on demons and scorpions and and um, when I look back at my life and I just take a take like a, a, a brief I realized that he blessed me so much you know now I've got a family I've got a blessed business um, whatever we touch just turns into gold and wherever we go, like Psalm 23 said, that the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God will follow us. And in Hebrew it says it actually will hunt us down. It will just come for us. And I can just see how it, how it does, you know. And every blessing I receive, I just want to turn back to praise, you know. Uh, the Lord has blessed us now nine months ago with, a, with an awesome baby. And I remember, you know, we were like looking at the names and... and um, I was thinking, you know, to name him, uh, you know, I have to give him like a family name. And the Lord said, no, call him Levi Issachar. And Levi means he is chosen by God because, you know, the power of the blood of Jesus. Because we know the blood of Jesus brings provision, it brings protection, and it brings healing. And, you know, the weapons that God has given to us for, you know, living a day of prayer, not just a religious um, thing, you know, but just having a relationship with Jesus Christ talking to him, um, consulting him every day because he's a friend sticking closer than a brother. The Lord spoke to me about two years ago and he said you must start a home cell and, and the people that I will send to this home cell will be people of influence. It will be world trendsetters that not only influence South Africa and set trends in South Africa but will set trends for the world you know and every person has got its platform and I can see how God is blessing them and putting them on the, on the right platforms and uh, I can just see how our God is good in every aspect and I just realized and, and one of my uh, one of the scriptures that's just part of my life is Philippians 1 verse 21 and it says um te lewe is my Christus en om te sterwe is my wins daarom maak ek myself los van wat achter is en ek strek myself uit na wat voor is om die jimmelse prijs te behal so we run, we in a race and, and, and we must run this race uh, with endurance uh, with faith and you know Jesus Christ has, has taught me so many things you know all about attention to detail all about self-discipline basically what I just realized is um, even in hell is a reality and um, God has saved my life and I'm knowing when I'm dying today or, um, I'm going to heaven and that's that's all that matters actually in life because the rest is just in vain because the word says what is it what does it help a man to gain the whole world but he loses his own life and uh, that's why we are here on earth it's all about souls it's all about winning winning people for Jesus that they can go to heaven that they can experience a life in eternity because you know re in reality you know time on earth let's say a blessed blessed man is 85 years uh, let's say 85 years on on earth it's like just a period it's like a test it's like 60 minutes in your life for eternity you're going to spend life in eternity in heaven with God where, where, where there's no sun that's shining but the glory and the grace of God is shining and um, I, I just thank God that you've chosen me you know that we can just go out and tell people about Jesus you know plundering hell and populating heaven and I've hanged my religion on the wall and I've taken up my cross to follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords which reign from heaven above with wisdom and power and love and all that I know is that he's not given me a spirit of fear but he has given me a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind and the Hebrew also says a disciplined mind you know by, by speaking love by capturing the thoughts which is not from the Lord and bringing it under, under the authority of Jesus Christ and and uh, just knowing that the law of attraction is upon our lives that will only attract the good and, and, and the, God will keep away the answer of the enemy because the word says that no weapon formed against us can and shall remain in Jesus name.